So, we'll start with on the side of the oldest apartment building in Brooklyn is written, she is all I see. The poem writes itself. <laughs> to her in one of those in-between days, since I will not see you today, I have to tide myself over with memories from my favorite Sunday. My mind falls back to that Sunday past where we did not walk a Pimrose path, but instead walked the brown fields and empty parking lots between the East River and the Lower East Side. We were looking for something, a restaurant, a bar, some respite from the summer heat. I regale you with the woes of a writer and an educator. You're in profile, with a sympathetic eye catching my glance. I would melt like all the other chocolate that made up those eyes if you would let me. You shrug. I wouldn't make it. You're right. Too much red tape. Your regal head with its equally regal brains would be overwhelmed with nonsense if you had to battle the machines I do every day. I simply could, can't stand how beautiful you are, how confident, how sure of yourself. I know the sensitivity inside, and I meet it with my own steely gaze. Making far off quests with your gaze for emotional solitude that much more beguiling when we follow. It is new for us to fall in love all over again when you are tattered and in tears, bitten and beaten down. The Ballad of Bobby and Foxy. They hold hands over the tabletop of a two-top in a midtown diner. Bobby, she says, it can't get any better. He sucks in his teeth and focuses on her dimpled cheek. I think so, Foxy. I think so, he responds, trailing off. He doesn't want his joy to seep through. It is early in their relationship, but they spend so much time with each other's words that they seem inseparable. They are two of those people on the street who speak too loud and walk lockstep hand in hand. In those dog day August hours, he wicks the sweat away from her nose, her brow. She small, smiles back knowingly. She hates the summer and the winter. So does he. Their birthdays are so close to the solstices, however, his of summer, her of winter, and August this is the worst time, but the diner's AC feels cool. Johnny, the waiter, steps in, calls Foxy Bobby's wife. It takes his mind off her questions. She asks him again, is there anything I can do to help you, Bobby? They drink their coffee in silence, a silence that doesn't need to be filled. They take their coffee the same way every week, sugar half and half. Johnny sets it straight down on the table. She asks him once more if she can help him. He nods. Really, Foxy, you love me. Is there anything else I can want from you? Oh, no. 